Hey guys, I normally would not make a video about this, but I just wanted to say that PewDiePie is being mistreated by us Magic the Gathering players. So obviously his video, which as of the time of this recording, which is 2.59 a.m. at night, yes, I do work very late, has 2.1 million views, which is more views for a magic video than everyone else's video combined that he accomplished in less than a day. So imagine that, right? At any time, he can make MTG Arena the number one viewed, the number one watched content on Twitch or YouTube by just making what he did recently, a video. Now, people were very offended on Reddit and it reminds me a lot of what's happening with Amazon. So if you don't know about Amazon, Amazon had a bidding process where Austin, Chicago, and eventually New York City won. And there's a extremely liberal person up in New York City from called Alexis, I forget, or Teaz. And she is a very young and very wealthy individual as she gets paid almost $200,000 a year to do her job. Her education is from Boston University and she has a FICO score of 430, which is very, very low. So somehow she got elected into my favorite state, New York. And she was proud that they, def they defeated Amazon and defeated the 25,000 high technology jobs that Amazon would be creating. Remember, these cities begged and pled with Amazon to open their second headquarters. Imagine how many intelligent people, you imagine how many startups, how many amazing companies would be birthed from this Amazon that's not even connected to Amazon. But instead, we had to demean Amazon, we had to hit them in the face a bunch of times, and eventually Amazon said, nope, we had enough. We're not even going to or open a second headquarters. That is devastating news if you're in the tech field like me because those jobs are now gone. Gone. Poof. Completely. They're not, there's no second headquarters at all. Now, PewDiePie reminds me exactly of this scenario where you have someone who is the biggest YouTuber, 85 million. Let me explain what 85 million is. You know Tolarian Community College, that one dude who gets paid a ton of money by Wizard of the Coast, the number one magic YouTuber, he has about 400,000. It's not just two times. It's not just 20 times. It's 200 plus times. So imagine 200 Tolarian Community Colleges all asking for a dollar every single day. That's what this guy is. But he doesn't beg. Ah, Interesting. And he doesn't he wasn't paid to make this video. Even more interesting. He actually has played magic since he was a kid. Wow, are you telling me this guy who could be producing any content, Fortnite, whatever he he's getting paid three hundred thousand dollars a sponsored video. Yet he's playing MTG Arena for free. And we should push him away like we Alexis pushed Amazon away. We just say, nah, we good. We don't need that money. We don't need the revenue. We don't need the startups. We don't need the business. We don't, you know, we want poor income housing. That's what we want. And this is exactly what the left is doing to Felix. They don't like Felix, uh, PewDiePie, because honestly... He said some things. He apologized. I accept his apology as me personally. I was not offended by what he said. Obviously, it didn't target me. And it didn't target my religion or my race. But I get it. I get why people are offended. I also understand what a amazing... If he came into the marketplace, everything changes. Your, your mana sources go away. They just go away. There's no more the mana source. There's no more wedgie. There's no more junior cheeseburgers. Because you have a real player in the field. An actual player in the field. 
the core demographics of Magic the Gathering has always been young males, predominantly white. This is the demographic. I'm not being racist. This is the core demographic of Magic the Gathering. And the movement for women for Magic, that's fantastic. Uh, transgender for Magic, that's great. Um, LGBT, I, I did the rainbow flag, that's amazing. At some point in time, somebody in the marketing department has to understand what's going on. It's, it's very difficult to acquire a woman who plays magic, to convince a woman they should play magic. It is far easier to convince a male to play magic. When you look at a GP, when you go, I played magic all over, New York City, Williamsburg, Virginia, Pennsylvania, Philadelphia, San Francisco, Houston, Austin, San Antonio. I have still never seen a woman magic player. I'm dead serious. I've gone to pre-releases with 150 people at the pre-release. None. No, zero. And I'm being told 40% of all magic players are female. So I'm being told something and I don't really understand if this is true or if I just live in the middle of nowhere and it doesn't make any sense to me when I'm being told something but then I see something that's actually different from what I'm being told. Anyway, my point being, this is a great opportunity and I was waiting for, you know, I... I give Unsleeve Media credit, but he did run away from Magic the Gathering. He's no longer with us. He's not producing Magic content. And people will defend him and say that I say, good on him. You know, good on him. It's just like Dar Dariums. I wish Dariums nothing but the best with Pokemon. He's a very big Pokemon channel now. He would not have been as big as a Magic channel. He had a fight with Weds and Tolarian, uh, mainly Weds, and he left because of that fight. I, I believe he left because of that fight. And now he's a huge Pokemon channel. Good for him. The same with Unsleeve Media. Don't come back. Like, I'm not saying don't come back for my sake or for the community's sake. I'm saying for your own sake because why you're on to bigger and better stuff. Uh, just like Darium says. So this is it. If PewDiePie, if half the subscriber base of MTG Arena is PewDiePie members, we're good. Everything will change. And it's up to him. He's the savior of the game. I've been waiting for something like this to happen for so long. And you might be like, oh, you criticize magic. You criticize women in magic. Blah, blah. There's so many women in magic. Yeah, fine. Great. Fantastic. Wait until, like, he was attacked on Reddit. Uh, he's obviously a very, he's a, um, he's, someone who gets criticized everywhere he goes. So MTG Arena, he's getting criticized by the MTG Arena Reddit. He's getting criticized by the main Reddit. He's getting criticized, as we'll see, from Saffron Olive. He's getting criticized from everyone on Twitter. And what they fail to understand is, if we truly have an accepting community, and that's what we have today, and we accept all people, why can't we accept Felix? Why would we not accept him and embrace him with open arms? Why? Because his ideology is a little different from yours? Well, your ideology is a little different from mine. So what's going on here? And I cannot wait because he can ruin MTG Arena with a snap. It's like Thanos, right? He already has these six infinity stones. With a snap of his fingers, all he has to do is make one of those videos saying MTG Arena is the worst game and everyone's to troll them. And it would be over. It would be over. No, I'm not asking him to do that, and I would not wish that upon MTG Arena. But Wizard of Coast should be very careful. If they upset this giant person, there will be ramifications. It's not like you can ban him for life like they are take away his accounts. Like you took away Unsleeved Media's accounts that he paid for. This wasn't even Magic Arena. This was Magic Online. He paid $10,000 plus and you took away his accounts and you didn't refund him and you had to do a chargeback, which then he won. 
you can't do that to Felix. There will be more RAM ramifications. So Unsleeve Meteor went on for a long time, just you know, attacking wizards, attacking wizards. Uh, there was whole uh, judge predators, which was a interesting and a very open discussion that did not paint Wizard of the Coast in the best light. There was a lot of predators, actually, not just judges, apparently. Um, there was a lot of issues with weds, obviously the whole hospital bill and weds, and you know that became a big debate. But that's on sleeve media. This dude is 200 times, imagine 200 angry on sleeve medias. <laughs> and this is what he can bring upon us. And I, I actually am excited. I've always felt that a reckoning would come. And I just had to wait it out. You know, I just had to continue producing my drama, the llama. I do actually have a llama. And I'll post a picture of it on Facebook if, my, uh, if I get, like, enough subscribers on my other YouTube channel, which I'm really promoting. I'll tell you a little bit about my other YouTube channel. Um, it's T-Y-G-U-O. I've been slighted by the Houston social media community, which is really strange because I actually spoke at their second annual event like I was a guest speaker I was one of the premier guest speakers so you'd think they would put me on the top list of 100 social media people but they didn't and they have it which is very surprising given the fact that my LinkedIn is the biggest and baddest of all of theirs by a factor of 10 I have 35,000 plus followers almost 36 the next highest LinkedIn person is like 3,000 and the whole list of 100 and because of my ideology, because of, you know, the fact that I'm not a bleeding liberal, they have kept me off this list for a long time, since 2015, since they, you know, and even longer than that, but that's when I started doing social media. So I get what Felix is feeling. I understand what Unsleeved Media feels, because that's what I feel. I feel like I've given it all, my all. So the one thing I want to do is a lot of these, quote, top 100 social media people, they have YouTube channels that are under 10 subscribers. I want to get big on YouTube for digital marketing in Houston. And then once I'm big enough, then I can really roar. And then watch out because all of this blank talking I do and online wait until i record it in real life so you guys might think i'm oh i'm so mean to the cheeseburger and the fake college professor or fake i don't even call it call it fake community college professor i'm actually a lot meaner in real life so remember i was talking about circumstances and how your characteristics don't change but your circumstances can highlight characteristics that are dormant well Imagine what a lion is. Yeah, a lion is lazy most times. Male lions sleep for 20 hours a day. They don't even hunt. The female lion does most of the hunting. But when it needs to, and it needs to fight, and its back is against the wall, you don't want to fight a lion. So back to my PewDiePie. We should embrace our savior, or the savior of Magic the Gathering has finally come. I thought it would be Boogie, but they've uh, blacklisted him. So <laughs> they kind of got rid of Boogie. And then maybe I thought maybe Unsleeve Media would get really big, get like a million plus subscribers, and then come back and, you know, battle it out with these uh, Alfinas and Efros and Alex Bacinis and Rachels and Tolarians and Wedges. And I mean, it could go on. I could continue on for days with listing people who are very extreme leftists, in my opinion. It really comes down to this. Why the blank would you turn away 25,000 Amazon jobs? You bid for it, you blanking idiots. It's like you bid for the Olympics and then you won the Olympics and then you decided. I'm going to make it so difficult, the Olympics are going to cancel themselves forever. I'm going to make the experience so difficult for something I bid on and won that the Olympics will never come back. That's exactly what it was. I guarantee you tech is not going to donate money to the Democrats this next year, this election cycle. They're not. They cannot be happy with this. And it's not just Amazon. It's all of them. They're all connected. 
Um, so um, that's a little rant, but back to PewDiePie. I've waited so long for a hero to emerge, for someone to finally be able to take on the Tolarians and take on the the mana sources and take on the the biggest and the most liberal YouTubers in our community because it's been one-sided for so long. It's been one-sided for so long that now with hopefully new people, um, we'll push it back to the center. We're not in the center. I can tell you we're not in the center because I can tell you you know, Wizards on the Coast employees feel like it's appropriate to attack customers for their ideology on Reddit in public. That is not typical. I have never seen a company do that is attack a customer in public. I have not, never seen a company ban a customer for their ideology for life. I have seen a company multiple times allow a cheater back in our game. I've seen a company who has tried to elect one of the most famous, if not the most famous magic cheater into the Hall of Fame. I've seen a company do very ridiculous things based on their ideology. And I've seen a company decay. Magic the Gathering is not what I remember it to be. And many of you will say, oh, you're a dinosaur. No. Dinosaurs are actually in. Ixalan. So I guess we're back. Let me explain what Magic the Gathering is to me. Right? So if I don't explain this to you, you won't know what the point of this whole video is. Magic was for the outcast. It was for the people who were picked on and bullied. It was, hey, you play Magic, I play Magic. Even if I hate your guts, we're still going to be best friends because there's not enough of us to go around. Magic is in middle school when your best friend gets punched in the face and his cards get stolen. And another person, another Magic player you've never met, stands up for him. And his name is Phil, and you become new best friends with him. Magic is having a Wizards of the Coast store. Yes, those did exist when I was young. And hanging out there on Fridays because there was nowhere else for you to go. All the cool kids won't invite you to their middle school parties with beer and alcohol because you're not cool enough to have those. So you just play F&M. Magic is when your best friend gets his collection stolen and everyone pitches in to make him a semi-okay deck. Magic is when you do a trade back that you really shouldn't do a trade back, but you, you agree to a trade back because it is your friend. And there's an unintentional trade back. Magic is a game that builds a community of people who don't belong. That is what magic is to me. It's for the people who get... My best example of who magic is for was when um, in, a, in a 4chan post, uh, in a 4chan post, they, uh, a female gamer, quote, gamer, blamed 4chan for death threats and, you know, calling her and, you know, saying all types of offensive stuff to her. Insert random female gamer. So, and then that female gamer became very popular, started to run Brianna Wu, started to run for Congress, Congress and president and whatever else she's going to get elected to do. And the 4chan, the post I will always remember is someone said, uh, did you call her? No, I didn't. I have you no know, social anxiety. I can't talk to people. Oh, I have social anxiety too. Yeah, I, I can't talk to people either. And then the post was those people with social anxiety helping each other. No one called her. By definition, she attacked the people who were least able to defend themselves. Because they were nerds, they were anime losers, they were otakus, they were not going to roar. And finally, we have someone. Things are going to change, I guarantee it to you. Because now things will be pushed to the center, which is where it always should be. Like, you know, you always, if I don't, Jeff Hoogling is a very good example. I clearly don't agree with him. He probably doesn't agree with me. But you know what? At the very end of the day, 
I agree that he has a right to express his opinion and not be blacklisted for that his opinions. And he believes that as well because we are open with how we feel. So the next time Amazon, that you bid on Amazon and then you run them out and Amazon has to cancel 25,000 jobs and, you know, and all these smart people now have to go somewhere else and all these startups and all these small businesses that could have existed and that could have grown for poor income housing when in fact the people who are living in the poor income housing will probably benefit the most, right? Because the job, their jobs, the salary, who doesn't want to work for Amazon? Seriously. The next time that happens and the next time the left really just goes after someone like PewDiePie and he doesn't belong, we blanking blank, blank him, Remember, you do have a voice, and you can talk, and you can be brave. And that is what I'm asking of you. Do not let them push PewDiePie around. Do not give them an inch. Because if they take an inch, you give them an inch, they will take a mile. And then Wizard of Coast will become people begging for dollars and hospital bills and health insurance and people asking for student loan repayment although they've chose an irresponsible major people asking for you to pay their health care bills when in fact they were told not to travel you know like let me take a very good example where do you think all this money like channel fireball lost a lot of money because of wedge they paid for him to be there to meet people and greet people that didn't happen because he got injured right away then it donated $5,000 to him. Where does that money come from? It comes from you, the customer, because instead of charging $5 for that card, they're gonna charge seven. They gotta make up the money somehow. It is a zero sum game. Channel Fireball is not an idiot, they have a monopoly. But if everyone's donating money to a Patreon at GP Las Vegas, no one's spending money, the vendors are not gonna be there next year. Rudy's not going to be there next year. None of the vendors are coming back because they didn't make any money because all the money went to this Patreon. The money, the money, I, I really hate to say this because I don't care about money. I never care about money. Follow the money. Just follow the money. Same with Amazon, same with Alexis, same with PewDiePie. Same with Wizards of the Coast, same with Tolarian, same with every single organization. If you want to know the truth about something, follow where the money leads. Alexis, whatever her name is, she is not like me or you. She makes $200,000 a year. She's not broke. She's not a broke millennial. Bye, guys.